All right, how about this one? No, Hojo, I don't think this should be a monster. But why not? Because you just drew an apple. The hunters could fight an apple. Yes, I'm sure they could, but how would it fight back? Uh, maybe there's a worm inside of it. Oh, that might actually work. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, the Monster Hunter series is very special for a lot of reasons. But one thing that comes up time and time again is the creature design itself. Obviously, there are lots of people who play the games purely from a love of the combat style, but that combat style has a big requirement, because it wouldn't be as fun as it is without having monsters with which to use it against. After all, if the monsters weren't fun to fight, it wouldn't matter if the weapons themselves were still great. With that said, we need the monsters, and with every new Monster Hunter game, we get new ones, most of the time being absolutely fantastic creatures, but what if I told you there were plenty of fantastic monster concepts out there that aren't even in the games? Of course, there are some that the developers have made themselves that they just don't quite consider making the cut, things that wind up in the illustration books, for example. But what about fans of the series? There are tons of just talented artists out there who are into Monster Hunter, and one of my favorite things to find when scrolling through the internet are fan-designed monsters for the series. I've talked about some of these before on the channel, but there are of course loads more that have gone gone undiscussed, and so today is about 10 fan monster designs that I would love to see brought to life in a Monster Hunter game. Number 1. Dreadnoughtus Monster by Mr. Sweet Tea. Starting off then with an absolutely massive monster, for reference, most of the time that people do monster concepts they put a hunter in for size comparison, but this one is so large it needs a Devil Joe for comparison. Essentially it's just a walking battery, this thing has electricity jumping from all of its spikes to one another, with an armored neck a mile long and a tail to match. I I love fighting giant monsters, especially ones that aren't particularly like dinosaurs, and th this thing just looks great. I mean, we had the Laranoth in Generations that were a somewhat of a similar shape, but they never had a large monster equivalent made to them. And I love this shape of creature, so I wish that they had. This, however, fills that gap perfectly. I can just picture it swinging both its crazy long neck and tail and just smashing you into the walls of the area. The idea behind this creature is it would be somewhat similar to our fight against Zora Magdaros, but on land. Sort of slowly wandering through a forest, knocking over trees everywhere, attracting other monsters over and causing chaos as a result. Not necessarily just it, but the monsters also, of course, causing chaos. And just to show how ridiculous this thing is, the artist even included a picture of them stomping down on a Devil Joe and essentially just killing them instantly, which shows why we sort of need to hunt a monster like this. I love it. It's just classically dinosaur-esque. The electricity is a neat touch on top of that, and I can just picture the absolute chaos of fighting this thing while a stampede of large monsters is running by. Number 2. Gazashu by Guggenheim98. I just adore the design of this guy, an elephant-like fanged beast, but, but not Gameth in that sense, but more like an Arzuros type of monster but with a long trunk and massive ears that could swing around to throw you off guard, and to just throw you off your feet as well, it would hit you with them of course. Then it also has some reasonably sharp looking claws and some big thighs for swinging around as well, but the main two things that this creature has going for it are the sleep status, which is always fun, there are very few monsters in the series that actually use sleep, so it's always right to see more, especially when it's done in an interesting way, like mixing it with the other main feature, the thievery mechanic, the ability to steal items from hunters. One of the concepts for this creature is that it will put you to sleep, and then when you wake up, you will find yourself just missing your entire inventory of items. Of course, this might be a little bit extreme of a punishment in actual combat context, but if it can be like taking a third of your items or something like that, maybe a tiny little mini game where you have to have other hunters or your palico flinch the monster to stop it from taking all your stuff, that could just be really neat. I assume as a result this means that it can steal from you with just its general moveset as well, the things that it does normally in combat, but of course it's a big special moment that would be punishment when you get caught out by the sleep status that it has. I uh, steal shit. Number 3. Unnamed Amphibian by Red Dragon This thing is absolutely lovely in a swampy, murky way, which is sort of exactly the point. Intended to be a particularly strong member of the roster of the Flooded Forest map, this creature looks both beefy and brainy. It has a big glowing throat pouch, and we can interpret that in a couple of different ways. Maybe it's more of a thunder-based creature, or maybe it is for flash bomb type shenanigans. Potentially, even I could see this monster just emitting a bright light constantly. Like, maybe when it's enraged, the light becomes 
so bright, it's just difficult to see the monster itself and track its movements, sort of like the opposite of invisibility in a way, just creating such a bright light that it's hard to look at the monster itself without some sort of consumable, or maybe the trick would be to point your camera straight at the ground or track a shadow in the back or some sort that would be cast by the influx of light. This creature just looks awesome, and I tend to love light or flash bomb based effects as another one of those things that just aren't particularly used often in the series, and I would love to have that on a higher tier monster as well. Number 4. Flying Crab by Zeno Dragomorph. This one comes with extremely little information attached to it, and yet, I love it anyways. It's essentially a horseshoe crab, but with wings. I can just picture this thing floating around like a, a couple of feet off the ground and trying to latch onto hunters. Maybe it just spins to whack you with its big round body. Hell, I can even see it sort of using its flaps and wings, sort of like front and back legs, sitting up and flapping you with the flaps. Uh, I guess slapping is a more accurate word. I don't even really know how to describe this properly, but I know I am looking at a flying crab and I need a flying crab in my life. Number five, Paravez by Lane Cruiser. This gorgeous, colorful bird wyvern would be a total spectacle to fight in an actual Monster Hunter game. It has particularly sharp claws and a body that is unusually slight for a monster. I mean, even most bird wyverns tend to have some thickness to them to make them feel protected, but this one has some great elegant features and some particularly tiny legs. The beak is long and sharp looking and its special ability is the ability to petrify hunters and monsters just with its radiant beauty, which I imagine to actually actually work in the effect in the game, sort of like stun or flash. Certain moves that it would do would be showing off its feathers in a particularly magnificent way and winding up with you being unable to move for a short period of time if you get caught staring at it. As well, the creator included a concept for a mantle created from the monster's parts, the crow mantle, which is sort of like a mix between the challenger mantle and the glider mantle, giving you the ability to glide, of course, because it's made of feathers, but also drawing the attention of any monster that you pass while wearing it, but in a non-aggressive way, which is a neat alteration to that concept. Make monsters want to follow you around, but not want to fight you. So you can just move them however you want to and just sort of hang out with them. My only friend now. Number six, Ventilonus by Natsu20. This terrifying creature is portrayed as an elder dragon with big flappy wings that almost look like the underside of a mushroom, at least in shape if nothing else. Maybe probably intended to be more like a manta ray, but I like mushrooms, okay? I think the design of this one is particularly neat and definitely unique when it comes to monster visuals, but the specialty of it really really comes with the notes about the fight, being somewhat inspired by the poison dart frog. This creature could inflict a particularly powerful poison, but not just inflict it as in certain attacks to poison, like a poison breath or something, but every attack does, physical attacks included, and it would apply poison even if you block the attack, but even more uniquely, it would poison you if you connect a hit on it as well, reflecting a sort of poison coating laying on top of the monster. As well, the creator had an idea that it might do something similar to confusion, messing with your controls a little bit as your hunter is fully nauseated by the poison itself. Obviously, this could be overwhelming as hell, but if you had poison resistance, it would fully counter it, which fits with the general theme within Monster Hunter of an Elder Dragon being particularly painful to fight unless you go out of your way to counter its main abilities. Number 7, Crusta Fungus by Lane Cruiser. And firstly, I just love the name, but this is another crab monster that is awesomely large, and you know how much I love crabs. Being particularly beefy and thick compared to the crabs that we normally have around in Monster Hunter, this one would be extremely extremely physical in its abilities. It has mushrooms growing out of its back and it would start the fight partially burrowed in the ground, waiting for some sort of prey to attempt to pick or eat said mushrooms. As well, this creature would have the unique effect of its status and status resistances changing on a quest by quest basis, depending on which type of mushroom happens to be growing out of its back. Parashrooms mean that it's immune to paralysis and attacks can apply a paralysis. And the same applies to various other mushrooms and their respective statuses as well. I would in fact be particularly interested in a nitro shroom crab, blasting off of punches at will. I think that would be extremely neat. Honestly, I'm just a sucker for a good crab. Simple as that. Number eight, Raimukata by Guggenheim98. This absolutely awesome monster is the embodiment of a centipede, but realized in the form of a snake wyvern. Instead of having a hundred legs, it has a hundred tiny little spikes coming out of the side of it. And you know, the regular four legs, or I guess two legs and two arms. But it also has the spikes coming out of its face and its tail too. They're just everywhere. It's a crying shame that we don't have more snake wyverns in the series, and I quite like this one as a concept for one. It looks absolutely gorgeous, you know, as far as being an insect snake, and I can sort of picture its attack style too. 
Of course, classic snake slithering around and trying to wrap itself around you, but the spikes add a bit more interesting bits to that as well, as I can imagine it trying to sort of Beyblade around a bit too, putting its tail in its mouth and just spinning towards you like a saw blade. This creature has the ability to apply poison and is known for existing up on mountain peaks, and in theory, even elder dragons are scared of its abilities. I think it's an awesome monster, it's a fantastic concept, and I would be more than happy to fight this in an actual game. Number 9, Toxinodon by Leon Leclerc. This giant fanged wyvern looks imposing as hell. It has a massive, thick chest with some relatively smaller legs coming out of it, it has angled teeth and a retractable tongue that can apply poison, and it uses its tail as sort of a giant counterweight to let it walk around on its hind legs somewhat in combat, allowing it to full-on tackle and grapple its prey. It can also just latch onto things with its tongue, which is a terrifying thought, and its general form of hunting is to just sit around in shallow water, waiting for helpless small animals to come near enough to meet their doom. Mostly, it's just that this one looks terrifying in an awe-striking way. I can totally see myself hunting it and having a great time doing it, and I love the general shape of it being somewhat unique. Number 10, Corn Serpent Greg by Thunderlord Zenogi. Okay, okay, I know, but hey, someone actually drew a bit of concept art of Corn Serpent Greg, the monster that Josh and I jokingly made up in a pro and noob video ages ago making fun of Narwa and Ibushi being referred to as the Thunder Serpent and Wind Serpent. And well, as funny as it is, I think we could totally make a fight out of this, you know? A corn stalk for a tail, and of course a lovely farmer's hat on its head, with one hand ending in a sort of fork type shape and the other with a big old cob of corn, which obviously would be used to fire kernels at you like a gun. This is quite simply the most realistic monster you could ever think of. I mean, guns, hats, pointy weapons instead of an arm, and all because corn is a real thing on Earth. It is unquestionable. Okay, yeah, I'm joking, but maybe there is some room for a corn-based monster to enter the series. I'm just saying, it wouldn't be completely unbelievable. And that's it, everyone. Ten more fan-designed monsters created by members of the community that I would be happy to fight in the series itself. A good majority of these came from our own viewers here on the channel, and were put into our Discord that you can find linked in the description of the video. Others I just found online while I was scrolling through the world, and of course I credited the source as well for those. Thank you for the people that made them, because these are all lovely designs and I'm happy to be able to share them with you all. Thank you for those who are watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this little journey. Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye